Hey everybody, how you doing today? Um, I am here with my friend Kelly Troop. I've never asked you, do you pronounce it Troop? Yeah, yeah, you okay, got it. Okay, perfect, awesome. So I'm here with my friend Kelly Troop. She's a fellow primal health coach. Um, if you see a lot of them, uh, if you see me interviewing a lot of them, it's because they're all terrific people. They're all super knowledgeable. And um, at least the ones I hang with, uh, <laughs> I think like, like run with like. So um, she was, uh, I got to hang with her at a uh, little get together that all of us had us primal health coaches had in the Poconos last year, about, about 15 of us. Um, and you were like my, my most favorite surprise of the, of the weekend, because I'd never really talked to you much. I hadn't looked you up at much. Um, but, uh, but like we just connected immediately and, uh, and you and my wife as well, which is always fun because my wife doesn't always connect with women a lot because they're just, she's not the typical woman, you know, with, uh, like not, not that all women are catty and stuff, but you know, she's not a drama person. So, um, yeah. so it's super fun to see the two of you connect. And, um, uh, some of the, some of your background that I know of, uh, like I said, you're a primal health coach. I'd love to hear how you got into that. Um, you're a sonographer, so you do sonograms. Um, what else, uh, what else is there about you that I don't know? Not much. I mean, we did talk a lot. I mean, <laughs> we definitely bonded over meat being that, you know, <laughs> primarily you kind of eat carnivore too, but um, pretty much uh, this is my second go around with having issues, even though I eat very healthy. Um, that's probably, uh, you were asking how I got into being a primal health coach. Well, I had metabolic issues at like 28. So yeah. um, I had a doctor that ran everything and was like, listen, Kel, you can go on metformin and a bunch of medicine, or you can eat a ketogenic diet. And it was kind of unheard of then. Um, I was like, I'm 28. So I went on ketogenic and it changed my life. And that's what kind of inspired is I was able to heal in like three months. I dropped 50 pounds. I just had a really good, you know, experience with it. So then I started to Did research. You, you dropped 50 pounds? 50 pounds in three Whoa. months. Whoa. I didn't know you had that, that kind of weight carrying around with you ever. Yeah. Well, I had three kids. So, you know, that, that, kind, of, <laughs> that kind of does some stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I was on a sad diet too. And, um, yeah. you know, I tried things in the past. I'd gone to the gym, you know, five, six days a week, counted calories, ate like 1200 a day, which is pretty low for a woman. Yeah. Um, and you're just, not short either. You're like five, eight, five, ten. Five, Five ten, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so twelve hundred for you is is a small, small amount of calories, right? And I wouldn't lose weight. Like I'd lose like ten pounds in three months, and I was yeah. frustrated because I was killing myself. And I'm like, there's more to life than this, you know. Yeah. So, but when I lost it that quick, I'm like, well, whoa. And when I the symptoms resolved, you know, I didn't have polycystic ovaries anymore. I, you know, the insulin went down. Um, you know, I, I wanted to tell other people and that's how I kind of started researching everything myself and I got more organic cause you know, you can kind of do like a sloppy keto and stuff, yeah. um, which is how I started. And yeah. then I got cleaner and just saw more and more benefits. Like my skin was, you know, so much better. Um, and yeah, signed up to be a primal health coach so I could help other people. Cause I thought right. it was important, especially being an ultrasound. I see so many sick people, you know, infertility, yeah. polycystic ovaries, you know, um, autoimmune the whole nine so yeah. that was my first run around um and then now i'm back on round two with having issues um and this was nothing that i did i mean i was eating a perfect diet i was you know primal i was keto i was eating all real food um and i ended up with some gut infections that i didn't know about um i'd had a surgery like two years ago at kind of like a community hospital and i think they infected me because <laughs> it was just like a vein surgery but the infections like the the scars kept like swelling up and pussing and they're just like, keep taking antibiotics, you know, and I, I think I destroyed my gut health and, um, the infections are clostridium, but they're not C. diff. So, yeah. but they're still negative. Um, but I had no idea this happened. Right. And then, um, at some point my face started breaking out, you know, I was getting these rashes like that. I, the kind of the same rashes that I'd get when I'd eat wheat, you know, like they would seep and they'd itch and they'd hive. Oh man. Um, and, but I couldn't figure out why. And I just let that go for a while. I'm like, it'll get better. I'll just eat better. You know, I kept changing my diet, kept adjusting it. Um, and honestly, I probably adjusted it the wrong way. Cause I was like, let's eat more veggies. You know, everyone says mm -hmm. veggies are so good. And so I was yeah. like, 90% of my plate was veggies. And, uh, 
I think that had some side effects. I ended up with, you know, like a leaky gut situation. And then I started to bloat and I started being constipated and I started just not understanding why I didn't feel good. I'd get some pain in my right lower quadrant. And I'm just like, what is going on? I mean, it took me a year fighting myself um, because I didn't want to get help. I didn't want to ask anyone else to look deeper. I'm like, food will heal me. It healed me before, but it wasn't the situation before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's when I got into carnivore and I was just like, I feel better on this and I'm, I'm not going to eat veggies just because people tell me they're good for me. And then yeah. research kind of backed everything up for me that I was right. I shouldn't be eating veggies yeah. right now. So. <laughs> and, and explain that a little bit, because what I find is almost everybody that finds carnivore um, and carnivore guys is just a meat based approach for, for some people it's meat only. Like I'm talking like ribeyes or steaks all, all the time for some, for people like Kelly and I, um, for multiple reasons, we both respect the animal. We use the whole animal as much as we are legally allowed to use. Um, we use, and uh, that means organs, bones. Uh, if we could get brains in the U.S., we would eat those. I mean, we will go all in if we can. Um, but that's both out of respect for the animal and because there's a lot of arguments that you can't get all the nutrients you need out of just meat. Um, you need all the other organs and, and everything to help out, but. There's people that have survived 20 years eating nothing but ribeyes every single day, and they don't just survive, they thrive. So there's a lot of openness and debate in this, in this arena, and people are very willing to talk about things, unlike some other diet trends where people just, they want to stab you in the back every time you say something wrong, according to them. So um, kind of explain why it is that you think vegetables for some people just are not the right thing. So vegetables are a stressor, right? And we, we know that stressors can be beneficial. Uh, um, you know, why are they stressors? What do you mean? Because they have anti-nutrients. Um, they have things that basically our body has to defend. You know, um, plants pretty much want to defend themselves from predators. Yeah. Um, whereas a fruit does not. You know, it wants to be eaten. It wants to spread its seed. A plant wants to thrive. And so mm -hmm. those things in our body cause immune reactions. Um, and sometimes that can be a good thing. But if there's any kind of gut issues, which a lot of us have, you know, um, it it makes it worse. So it, it degrades that mucosal lining. Um, and what happened in my case is I had the leaky gut probably because of the infections depleting, you know, my good bacteria, which is also a protector, but it let them into my bloodstream. And what happened was, is my cholesterol was going insane. So we all know that we don't really care about numbers, um, but we care about density and particle size and all that. Um, but my overall cholesterol usually was about 250 and I was at 500. Wow. Um, yeah. That's yeah, a difference. So big jump for myself, you know, personally. So when we dug deeper, my particles were dense. And um, so there's definitely something going on that my body was fighting. We just couldn't figure out what it was. But um, the, the thing that my doctor picked up on, and this is the same doctor that said, go on keto was that I was a hyper absorber of cholesterol. And yeah. I was like, really? I'm like, what, what labs are you looking at? And he's like, oh, there's these, um, you know, phytosterols, there's this citerazole, there's camperazole. And I'm like, okay. So I looked at the labs and I saw it was elevated and I was like, it didn't make sense to me. I'd just done the like 23 and me test. And it didn't say that I had familiar cholesterol issues. I didn't have the APO4. And I was like, so why am I a hyper absorber? You know, like what's making this happen? So I started digging. I had no idea about any of these cholesterols. Well, they're, they're plant cholesterols. Um, and what happens is your body's supposed to basically shunt those out the body. We don't absorb those. We don't use that kind of cholesterol. That's Interesting. basically not how our body operates. It's like yeah. trying to run Apple software on a droid. You yeah. know, it's kind of That's how a great I, I, I always it, say it's so. like trying to put Toyota parts on a Ford. Like you can yeah. do it, but holy <laughs> cow, does it take a lot of work? Right. So, um, so basically when these get into your bloodstream, they cause an immune reaction. So then that's where these autoimmune things kick in. Your body's saying, Hey, this doesn't belong here and attacks it. A lot of other things can get attacked, but how I figured that out was actually going back to my blood work that I had done in 2013, which was also an extensive, um, cholesterol panel and those markers weren't there. So I wasn't a hyper absorber then. How am I a hyper absorber yeah. now? And that's when the leaky gut kicked in and Hey, these plants that I'm eating, I'm not getting the benefits from. Um, they're just basically getting in my bloodstream and making my immune system even more activated. Um, so eliminating them eliminated a lot of my issues, but if, unfortunately it's not going to cure the infections. That's where the antimicrobials come in, but that's kind of how I figured it all out. That is mind blowing to me. So I, I, wow. 
I'm not uh, speechless too often about things. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize. So what you said there was that you had leaky gut and um, the cholesterols from the plants were actually getting through and causing you to appear to be a hyper cholesterol absorber, which means mm -hmm. your cholesterol super skyrocketed, which is not a terrible thing. But when it's the small dense LDL versus the large dense LDL, that's when there's a problem, right? So if it's small dense LDL, and if you have high inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, then you have troubles, huh? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things that can lead to heart disease. And we normally stress on, you know, certain areas, like it's the sad diet, but honestly, you can get there eating a carnivore diet if something else is yeah. going on with your body. Yeah. And it's, so it's inflammation. Like if you're overly stressed, that's inflammation. If mm -hmm. you drink too much, uh, that's inflammation. If you are never, ever touching the ground or see the sunlight, you will have inflammation just because of those things. So, okay. wow. So um, what did you do to, to clear that up then? Um, it's still a work in progress. Um, clearing up infections um, with antimicrobials is is not a like very fast process. Mm -hmm. So it'll probably be the next few months. Um, I'm taking like a mixture of oregano oil and wormwood and extracts from those and kind of rotating through them. Yeah. Um, which is a really good thing to do because your body can get used to them just kind of like it can antibiotics. Um, but what's nice about the antimicrobials is they kind of support gut health a little more. Um, they don't kind of destroy the good bacteria usually, but it's going to be three months of these antimicrobials and then rerunning my blood work to see um, if everything responds well, because there were other markers too, like my white blood cell count was low mm -hmm. showing that I had like a chronic infection, um, completely deficient in zinc. Figure that wow. one out because How? the only thing I eat is meat. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, that's incredible. So like usually carnivores that have zinc problems, that when they cut when they become carnivore and, and animal based, that just disappears immediately, right? Um, because it's the things in plants, it's that the anti nutrients you were talking about that will bind to the plant or the, the anti nutrients in the plant will bind to zinc. Like there's They'll a study with yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a study that. Um, with the uh, like bean burritos, right? I always love hearing this study because if you have just a burrito with steak and whatever else goes in a burrito, no beans, um, it, you'll get like a 90% of absorption of the zinc in the steak. As soon as you add in the beans, um, you drop as low as like 10% absorption of zinc. So, and that's the beans, right? That's the anti-nutrients in the beans. The things that you said, a bean or green plants, plants, they don't wanna be eaten. And they don't have claws and teeth like animals do to fight us off. They literally are just stuck there. God made them with these uh, with these natural built-in pesticides. Um, so yeah, that's that's terrific. And to totally cut cut in like and and not not that I just didn't. Um, one of my I was telling Chris this yesterday, Chris Pryor. One of my favorite things about being with friends when we're on trips and stuff is breakfast. I don't eat breakfast at home, but. I've been doing these interviews and I've been having bacon and coffee every morning because there's nothing, nothing in this world like waking up and having a conversation like this. Uh, it's like one of my favorite things. And like we were doing this every morning for three or four days and I just love it. I love it. It was the best. It was the best waking up and just sharing with everybody and standing around. And, yeah. Having stories. Yeah. And yeah. Were you depressed when we left? Like, yeah. Yeah, big time. I think, oh, yeah, that's right. We ran into each other on the highway on the way home at one of the rest stops. And we were like, guys, we don't want to leave. Like, can we just go back? Like, we don't need real life. It's fine. Why, we'll just stay here now. Why is this happening? <laughs> so. right, yeah, I'm still depressed about it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I still want to do it again. And I, it really opened up a whole um, new, like, mindset for me. Like, I want to interact with people on Instagram and you know, yeah. you learn so much and you, you yeah, know, it's just, it's great. Cause it's like like-minded people and you don't find that every day. You find the people that look at you sideways cause you're trying to like run off with some liver in your cart, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it, like really like-minded people, which is like I, I, paleo community. I'm always blown away when I talk about eating organs or, or like doing any kind of biohacks and they're like, you do what? And I'm like, yeah, you know, like vibration plates and red light therapy. And, and now that's becoming more mainstream with those yeah. guys. But like, I don't know. I've been doing this for like eight years, nine years. So um, to me, it's like, how can no one else know about this? <laughs> so Same, same. Yeah, it's been a really long run here. And yeah. uh, I feel like it's getting out there more. So that's nice. Um, yeah. But and you're an Erie PA. And that's really cool that Erie, Pennsylvania has 
some doctors that are hip enough to actually figuring out some of these issues you've been having. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I kind of had to school mine on this one. Like I'm going to come back. Like I got to come back with my cholesterol numbers down and be like, cause he was trying to put me on meds. And I was like, no, I'm not doing the statins, not doing yeah. it. So I'm going to come back and be like, look what I did. Like you need to dig deeper. Like you told me to dig deeper. How many years ago I'm bringing it back at you. And he's one yeah. of the doctors receptive of it. So I love it. You know, That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier that a lot of these things started when you were 28. Um, you are not 28 now. And I am always so impressed every time. If you don't want to say your age, you don't have to. But but uh, you look incredible for any age. You look incredibly healthy. And to even think that you have gut issues um, blows me away. Because normally gut issues means that the skin and everything just goes haywire. You look incredible. Yeah, I'm uh, th going to be 35 in April. So definitely getting up there. But uh, and it's funny, too, because I have like all these autoimmune markers right now. Like my labs came back um, basically saying that I had lupus and shajorans and connective tissue. And um, I was trying to build muscle and I couldn't. I was talking to you about it. You know, I was like, yeah. I just can't. like I'm not seeing any results. I've tried this and my immune system drops. Well, now I know why, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Man. Um, the next thing I really want to touch on is like, you're a woman and you're eating carnivore. You're eating meat only. You're not touching vegetables. Like that's not ladylike. What are you thinking? Why, how dare you? Um, meanwhile, to us, we have so many friends that eat this way. So um, kind of, can you talk about why this could be such a, a fantastic thing for women to at least try as a reset, maybe a two week or one month reset? Um. For a couple of reasons, I think too, eating plants messes with our hormones. Um, you know, basically it removes a lot of our estrogen and for some people that's good, but for some people that's going to throw their cycles off. So mm -hmm. going on a meat-based diet actually probably could just reset those hormones. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how many women friends you have, but uh, a lot of them have heavy periods and, you know, pain and symptoms. And that's not normal either. Yeah. Um, I can say I'm pretty darn average. I'm three days. It's it's like a breeze, you know. So yeah. um, I definitely think carnivore would have a role in that as well. Yeah, I know um, Kim. Kim would have a lot to say right now because Kim's mostly carnivore, um, which probably would surprise a lot of her friends. I know when she goes to work functions. <clears throat> and uh, everybody knows that I'm a health coach and that we both eat, eat, eat healthy. They'll say, oh, so uh, do we just want us to get, do you want us to get you salads? And she'll, she'll look at the menu and she's like, no, get me the wild boar. Like yeah. I, I want the, the whole leg of a wild boar or something, you know, and, and everybody's always blown away by that. But, um, but yeah, for her, it's been her cycle that, that she's seen different things happen. And to be totally candid, her cycle did not get better, especially in the beginning because of carnivore. It actually threw it way out of whack at first. Um, and then as she progressed, now it's back to normal, maybe a little better than normal. But when, when she first went primal um, and like paleo ancestral health, I mean, it went to like nothing. No, it didn't bother her at all. Never pain, never anything um, like heavy flow, but not that that was it, you know, and um, I think that might have changed a little now, but the, there is more. She still notices it a little more than she used to on just primal paleo. So it could be that carnivore is not ideal for her, but she still feels she she's noticed, you know, that feeling when you first start and you're like, holy cow, I am light on my feet. Like I, I'm floating through a room. I don't know how to explain it. That's how she she feels great. So. It's, it's just something that. you really can't explain to anybody either. Cause I've tried, I'm like, I, I can tell you that I was a person who wanted to sleep 10 hours a day. I didn't get up yeah. till nine o'clock. I, you know, had no energy, no motivation, but that is not me anymore. I'm up at yeah. seven. I'm ready to go, you know, and yeah. you, until you live it, you just don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, um, early last year when I was eating tons of vegetables and trying to, trying to get through whatever was going on with me, I was sleeping nine or 10 hours a night and waking up tired. Um, yeah. I was bloated after every meal and I had to finally, after a year of researching carnivore, I finally went, Oh, my guts messed up from raw vegetables and, <laughs> and I cut them out and, um, and it, it did a huge change for me, a, a massive difference, but explaining carnivore, explaining the way you feel, it's almost like trying, if you've never heard, if you've never been in love or never heard of what love was and mm -hmm. someone tries to explain the first time they're in love, like it's kind of, it, it's not that extreme because that's really extreme, right? But it's that feeling of like, you don't understand what's like, how, how you could feel like normally I'm walking here, but all of a sudden I'm just up here. 
<laughs> That's all I can explain. And it's like, there's if you're going upstairs, it's like, oh, big whoop. It's one step to get upstairs, like a whole flight of stairs. If you're, you know, I don't know, walking to the mailbox that's 100 foot away, I'm there in two steps somehow. I, that's that's not literal, but that's how I feel when I've gotten everything out of my gut and it's just animal products in there. So um, it's it's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, touching back on Kim, another possibility is there's something else going on that's messing with her hormones. Like, yeah. Um, cause you know, as you know, like stress and something along those lines, or could sure. be like an HPO access, you know, or HPA access thing going on. Yeah. Um, so there might be some other reason why, you know, those hormones I, aren't settling just right. I have a feeling, um, I have to force feed her organs, which means she rarely ever eats organs. And I really feel like, um, getting, getting like a lot of liver and kidney in her for a couple of weeks, um, would change it. I think it would just straighten things up. Um, I don't think there's a problem with fat for her because she eats plenty of eggs and, and she'll like her breakfast is normally eggs and prosciutto. Um, mm -hmm. last night we were, we have lamb fat and, um, and I wrapped that up in, uh, what the heck did I wrap that in? Oh, just a piece of egg white that I had from a duck egg, just yeah. a little chunk of lamb fat raw wrapped in duck egg is heaven. I think wow. I have some in the freezer. I might have to thaw that out. <laughs> Amazing. So the last couple of days, I find that after a while I start getting, I don't feel satisfied after a meal. And I'm telling you, you feel satisfied when you eat carnivore. Mm -hmm. But when I stop feeling satisfied, it's either because I've not been eating actual meat. I've been eating like meat, you know, like not jerkies and stuff, but like sausages and things. And I prefer mm -hmm. just real meat. And so it's either I've been eating too lean of meat um, and I have to throw in some fat because I have, I have egg issues. So, um, uh, it, it's usually, it's usually just that I have to add in more fat where I've not been having enough protein or both. So depending on my activity levels, that's how I have to do it. But man, butter does not make that better. Um, mm. tallow does not make that better. It's actual animal fat un unrendered that makes me feel better. So that's awesome. Have you, have you looked into PKD or paleo medicine from Hungary yet? A little bit, but I've not studied it too, too much. But um, our friend Katie that we met in Pittsburgh last year, um, she knows a lot about PKD, I believe. Um, yeah. So uh, for everybody watching, PKD is um, paleo, paleo ketogenic diet, which is a sun. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. yeah it's I it's a, um, a hungry, a, a doctor, a, a clinic in Hungary created it and they're treating. If you have a disease, they figure out how to treat it using a animal based approach, like just animal based. I'm talking all the things that people think you can't treat like cancer. Um, they are treating people with cancer. It doesn't mean that's curing it, but it's treating it. So it's our, improving our, it. yeah, improving yeah. markers. Um, I mean, when we, if we're serious about it, our regular healthcare industry does not cure cancer most of the time. So they, didn't cure me. they couldn't even figure out what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. So, um, anything else about women in keto, like or women in carnivore? Cause like keto was hard for women to get over at first. Cause they're like, I can't eat all this fat. And now it's gone even further, right? If you, if you're not getting fixed from keto, it's, well, I can't eat all this meat. That's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a little bit about just protein requirements, right? So mm -hmm. maybe touch on some protein requirements. Yeah, that's, that's where it kind of brought up the PKD because they're, they're, um, there's two kind of breeds of carnivore right now. There's one that it's like, eat all your muscle meat, eat all the protein, but then PKD is you eat twice the fat and then, you know, um, to like, it's like a two to one ratio with your protein meat. Uh, so that's why I was kind of curious because I'm finding more people are leaning. Cause you were talking about how you eat the tallow, um, or like the unrendered, you know, that you're seeing results and that's kind of what they aim for. Yeah. You see constantly plates with just added fat on there and less protein. Yeah. Um, so well, maybe that would work best for you, but that seems to be when you need to heal the ratio that you need, um, yeah. is more fat and a little less protein. And I think their rate, like amount of protein is actually only like 30% of your daily yeah. intake, which so is I, interesting. I feel way best when I go, oddly enough, like I kind of switch between very lean meat, like deer, um, mm -hmm. like a pound, a pound and three quarters to two pounds a day. Like I will literally just cut open a pound of deer or a pound of ground meat and have that. Um, but I, I really prefer just steaks or, or like lamb, leg of lamb. I cut that in the steaks, but I'll go very lean for, for a handful of days, maybe five, six days. And then I'll switch up to like leg of lamb, which is pretty fatty, but I'll usually actually cut the leg of lamb, the fat off the leg of lamb 
um, and I will eat that on its own raw and, uh, and while I eat the steaks. Um, and then I've had enough of that after four or five days and I switch back to a leaner meat. Um, if I'm able to eat eggs, uh, which I can do every, every few weeks, I'm able to uh, throw eggs in there without causing any issues, then I will have like eggs when I start feeling that way. But really, um, I think if somebody has a couple eggs a day, two to, two to six eggs a day and lean meat, they're probably just fine. Um, but yeah, I feel best when I have, when I do kind of a cycle, I, if I stick to just fatty all the time, I don't feel good after a few days. If I stick to just lean, I don't feel good after like a week and a half. It takes a lot longer. So that like, I I've heard a lot of guys like the guy from carnivore cast, I think, or no. Yeah. Carnivore. I think it's carnivore cast. I can't remember the podcast that, um, he's like, listen, I, I eat like, he, he eats like three or four pounds a day. He's no bigger than I am. Um, but he goes very lean meat. He feels best that way. Um, and then a guy like Dr. Paul Saladino, he's been kind of flip-flopping and finding a little balance for himself. But yeah, I've heard all different things. Yeah, it's definitely a N plus one. And that's kind of where I'm at. I, I really don't focus on macros right now. Um, and I don't focus on how many times I'm eating a day. I mean, it's yeah. less because I'm on carnivore. But I'm literally just kind of eating when I'm hungry. And I, I tend to eat a bigger meal, I think, earlier in the day. So like, you know, somewhere between like noon and two is when I have like my big ribeye or whatever. And then sometimes yeah. like around four, I have like a light snack, um, you know, so I've, I've definitely switched that up. But I, I try not to overthink it anymore because I can drive myself crazy trying to get these perfect ratios. Yeah, And I, I feel great right now. So I'm like, I'm not going to even worry about yeah. it. Yeah. My whole life, like for, for most of, for half of these eight years, nine years has been tracking and doing stupid, making myself nuts, literally driving myself to where I had no testosterone. Um, I was trying so hard with keto and stressing myself out over numbers and all these things. And yeah, I looked great, but my stuff wasn't working anymore. And yeah. like for a dude at 32 years old, when things stop working because you're stressing yourself out so bad and you're eating too few calories, all of a sudden I said, this, this isn't the right approach. This is like, wait, I, like this should not be a problem for me. I want to have kids someday. Right. So, right. um, I started flipping that around. Thankfully at that time I had made friends with, um, with a, uh, a woman named Amy Killen, who's uh, Dr. Amy Killen, who's like, uh, uh, one of the biggest sex, uh, sex therapist, not, not, not like mental therapist, but she does stem cell research and, and, um, um, testosterone and, and estrogen therapies, different therapies for people on that front. And, um, she's like one of the leaders in the world on that. And I was like, well, I'm going to take advantage of talking to her. <laughs> so, um, so we, uh, we got that worked out a lot. And, um, and then all of a sudden I just, I just stopped doing the whole calorie counting thing and stopped worrying so much. And then, man, when I found carnivore, my body does not care at all how much I eat for the most part. Like, obviously I get full, like overly full if I have too much, but I haven't had a single problem uh, with, with my testosterone and all that, all that that encompasses. Um, I always like to say my thermometer works now. So yeah, a lot of men rage about how great they feel on carnivore. Like their sexual health is just like through the roof. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, like, to be a 32 year old guy, have a beautiful wife and not want her. That sucks. So, um, that is gone now and that's awesome. So that, that's like, uh, all kind of prayers answered there. And, uh, and like life is amazing. There's less stress with food, less, less food issues at all. And, um, I'm, I'm still a food addict through and through, but um, heck, carnivore like can cut down addictions in general. So um, I, a lot of people, mental health issues, because it's all tied to the gut, right? So yeah. um, I, we can go on this for forever, um, but uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you have somewhere to go. Uh, do you have any couple things you want to finish up with? Yeah, just kind of um, from what I shared earlier that, you know, if you're not feeling ideal on carnivore, especially if you're like eating nose to tail and your skin's still breaking out or you're a little constipated or there's something going on, um, it's my big thing to tell you to dig a little deeper because, yeah, we may feel better, but there's yeah. ideal and we should be striving for ideal. Yes. And the reason why it's so important is because if I were to continue on, I would have had full blown autoimmune, even just eating meat because mm -hmm. 
just things getting in my bloodstream in general is going to cause an autoimmune reaction. And what happens when that goes on for long term is your liver is going to suffer um, because it's constantly producing those, you know, T cells to fight off this infection. You'll actually end up with fatty liver and cirrhosis, you know, and your liver will die. Yeah. And the same thing happens if you have like a leaky gut is usually you have a dysbiosis too. It, those bacteria will actually go to your pancreas your pancreas has no bacteria in it and no way. So it starts defending itself and attacking itself and you'll end up with type one diabetes. And that's yeah. something that I read that really blew my mind is that you can literally kill yourself from the inside out. Um, if you don't pay attention, don't dig a little deeper sometimes. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, I'm not not that great. You know, it's not great that we do that to ourselves, but that's great information to hear. Um, when you just walk through the grocery aisles and you see people in those middle aisles grabbing just boxes and bags full of stuff that isn't food, it's all chemicals. You kind of have a feeling that that's what's happening inside them. Right. And, yeah. uh, and that's heartbreaking to, to people like us, but along the lines of, of keep digging, if you're not feeling ideal, keep digging, you know, maybe carnivore is the right approach uh, for a short time. And if you're not feeling right on carnivore, there's tweaks to carnivore. There are ways to change it. Like we were talking about fat ratios, Mm -hmm. Um, are you including salt in your diet? Is it the right kind of salt? Um, that's huge for so many things, um, in, in any diet. So, um, electrolytes, um, I love LMNT. Um, I drink one a day. I just, because I know the ratios are right and I don't have to tinker like, yeah, I could do it myself, but I enjoy those. So next time thing I do. (laughs) Yeah. Next time we see each other in person, we need to like, just swap a whole bunch of things. Cause I've never, I've never tried them. And, um, but, uh, you know, I, I used to work for Primal, so I have a whole bunch of sauces and dressings if you might want to go that route. And <laughs> Do some crazies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, where can everybody find you? Um, I'm mostly on Instagram. Um, you can look up Kelly Troop on Facebook. Sometimes I post things, but generally I've been kind of running with the Instagram. I think it's just more tribe-like, as we talked about, you know. Yeah interacting with like-minded people. Um, I put my at name on there for Instagram so everybody can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Revolve went to uh, went to gated. Yeah. I need to like come up with something. I'm like afraid to change it because it's been that for so long, but I nobody can it. say it. it's, it's supposed did. to be. Revo- <laughs> it was revolution wellness integrated, um, but I just shortened it to revel and then the wellness got shortened. So it's just kind of like a little thing, but I didn't realize that I definitely should have made that easier to say. <laughs> it's okay. If I had a guy on the other day, his uh, it's at, at the lamppost. So it's the at symbol at the lamppost. He goes, I wasn't so savvy then. So um, (laughs) what is an ideal client for you? Because like, we don't want to work with people we don't want to work with, but we want to help everybody. So what does an ideal client look like for you? Um, you know, I, I definitely like working with uh, metabolic issues being that I've been through it and, and the gut issues as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, autoimmune, all that stuff like that. I, it really hits home for me cause I've lived it. And I think that's the best way to help somebody is when you have personal experience in that area. Yeah. Um, and you're not trying to just, you know, give them information that, yeah, will probably work, but you're like, Oh no, listen, I've done this, this, and this, I've already been there, done that. I think that's, you know, the right relationship to have for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So pretty much if you have been trying to lose weight a hundred times over and you can't, if you have symptoms in your gut, in your body, on your skin that your doctor can't work with, that doesn't, he doesn't know how to fix it. Um, and he just keeps saying, oh, you just eat too much. Um, well, this is belly. normal. You're normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just not walking enough and you're eating too much. That's a joke. Um, I could tell you, I could show you a thousand people who have had that same issue and they correct it by still not walking at all and eating the right foods. So, uh, uh yeah, I wasn't exercising at all when I dropped that 50 pounds. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> I dropped 60 and it was all food. So it was yeah. cool. Um, mm-hmm. Kelly, thank you so much. I can't wait to uh, to see you in person again uh, sometime soon. And um, I'm very excited for for the uh, the direction your life is going, the the stuff you told me offline, the the new the new job and uh, and all there is there. I'm really excited for you and uh, I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, so um, yeah, I've missed you guys. So it was good to say hello this morning and uh we definitely need to catch up once this whole thing is over. <laughs> I know. I know. So um, stay on. I'm going to end the broadcast now. So everybody that uh, that chimed in different times, thanks so much. If you have questions for Kelly, you can find her on Facebook or Instagram at at uh, at what's on her name tag there. Um, Revolve went to, went to gated. So um, <laughs> and uh, thanks so much, everybody.